Swamiji, so much has changed in a hundred years. We have electricity, we have computers, we have internet, so many cell phones, that type of thing. And yet the world seems to be getting crazier and crazier. What, are we heading towards chaos? Where are we going? Well, you know, it's interesting, but in India, they have a system, they, they not a system, they explained what actually happens, but there are certain ages that man goes through. This whole planet is affected by the different rays as it passes through the universe. And at this time, it has entered a new age, an age of energy. And just because the old age has been, it's passed, but yet memory is still there. The old age was when man thought everything was material, everything was solid, everything had shapes and so on. Now we understand everything is fluid. There's a sort of combat between these two. But now we're living in a new age and uh, the old ways of thinking have to go away. So we're going to see a great deal of problems, especially in the year and the years coming up. Depression, warfare, yes, atomic bombs, it'll be, a, it'll be chaos. That's a pretty bleak picture, Swamiji. It's a bleak picture, I'm afraid. But on the whole, in the end, the energy will end up winning because that's the age we've come into. So then there will be centuries of peace after that. But How I think long? it'll be centuries of peace for a handful of people now living. Oh. How long will the chaos happen? A few years, maybe. Yeah. How would you suggest that people approach this coming disaster or difficulty? I would say, first of all, well, the obvious thing is do stock gold and silver. Stock food also. You can't go in at the last moment when, the, when everybody's doing it. Stock food now. Pile. Uh, get food that will last a long time. Get it well packaged. And gold and silver... Money is not going to be worth the paper it's printed on. It's, um, and this will be a global inflation, global hyperinflation, not just America. But we have seen it several times in just our times, in Germany in 1923, in Argentina and other countries. We know it can happen. When the government prints too much, too much money, Sooner or later, suddenly there's no end to it. They just have to keep printing more and more. And I know, for example, in Germany, in, the, in 1923, when they went through that very serious time of hyperinflation, the, in the morning, um, for a certain number of millions of marks, you get two sausages. By afternoon, you can only get one sausage. Mm. One man took his paycheck in a wheelbarrow to a store and he thought, well, nobody's going to steal this money. So he just left it there and went into the store. When he came out, he found the wheel, wheelbarrow had been stolen. <laughs> the money was blowing around the streets. Aww. But so that's the time, the sort of time we're coming to now in America and all over the world. So we have to think in terms of what do you need first? You need food. How are you going to get food? You can stockpile it. But you can't stockpile it for a long period of time. What you should do is get land out in the country. Land where you can grow your own food. And inasmuch as very few people are competent as farmers, better to be with other people. I myself am a writer. I'm not a farmer. But I have gathered people who do know farming. Be I'm, not a, I'm not a builder, I'm a writer. I've gathered people who do know building. I've gathered with a community of people who can have many different talents and they go to form what is needed in any society. Swami, I've heard about such communities in America mainly, but most of what I hear is fanaticism. People have weapons and, a, and an attitude that's very uh, fragmented. I don't like that. I'd rather invite people in and give them what I can. I'd like to help people in such times. But how can you help them when you have nothing to help them with? Grow enough food not just for yourselves. 
grow it so that you can feed other people too. And uh, there will be a time. I think that this greedy, selfish consciousness is what is causing this depression. It's the basic reason for it. When people can think more in terms of sharing and of giving, then they will get away from it. Is that uh, the, the way that America has been in the past? It seems that America used to be very generous, or it, it, that's my perception of it. Is that still your perception? Americans are more generous than other people. But you have to say that business is business, and that's, that's the expression in America. Selfish. Hmm. We got to think in more broad terms. It's, yes, we're generous as a people, but uh, let's expand that to including our own neighbors. Swamiji, in contemplating future hard times, it's, it's easy to become panicky and frightened. Do you have any advice for people? Yes, when you're right, when you're frightened and when you're panicky, you stop thinking. And what you've got to do is remain calm so you can think. So m better be prepared and then you'll be calm when it comes. You're not hit by the thing like in the jaw. <laughs> you're just, you're ready for it. If you can get land now, with people, even now, and I think that we're very close to this time now. Get other people together. Try to, or get land and then invite other people to join you in it. But if you can do that, you will find that when the times come, you'll be calm and you'll be ready to help other people. Another important thing, though, is that if you learn to be calm in yourself, what I have found is that Everything comes to me when my attitude is right. And if it's wrong, it doesn't come. So a panicky attitude drives success away. Whereas a calm attitude, to be even-minded and cheerful under all circumstances, is good. One practice that I've, I've done for, for many years now, I've thought, what is the worst thing I can imagine happening to me? and then imagining it happen. And instead of getting panicky, thinking, what can I do about it? And I did this even to the point where I had a dream the other night, just a few weeks ago, in which my enemies, everybody has enemies, but they were burning me at the stake. Mm -hmm. And in this dream, as happens in dreams, they were sitting at a banquet table nearby, feasting and laughing and drinking, and mm -hmm. there I was burning. Then some friends of mine, came and saved me, and I didn't have to burn. But I was very pleased to see that when the fires were coming up around me, and after they saved me, I was equally indifferent to both. Mm -hmm. If you can be indifferent to hard times, if you, if you can be indifferent to tests, and not go to pieces over them, then you can deal with them not only calmly, but effectively. Swami, indifference is an apathy, though, I think. Or is it? Indifference is not apathy. It's acceptance. Uh -huh. I mean acceptance that, okay, this is reality. Now what can, I do? what can I do about it? In that case, my reality was that, well, I die. But we all have to die sometime. So I get excited about it. Once you've left your body, you're not in pain anymore. <laughs> in fact, you're completely free and your soul is happy. So... That's part of it. The other part is that when you were um, indifferent in the sense of accepting, I accepted that they could burn me if they didn't burn me, all the right. If I accepted the ups and downs of life, success and failure. There was a man who was very wise, and a young man asked him one time the secret for his wisdom. And he said, well, come, I'll show you. And he took him to his bedroom and opened a drawer. There was a little fragile seashell there, in perfect shape. He said, there's my answer. He said, in the Depression in the 1930s, I lost all my money overnight. And I was ready to commit suicide. And I sent my family away. And I took a little cabin by the, by the ocean. And my plan was to go into the ocean and just let the waves take me and drown. But they kept throwing, throwing me back. 
and I'd fall onto my knees and get up and try again and try again. And one time I got up and I saw this little fragile shell. It was being beaten by the same shell, by the same waves, but it, it remained intact. And I thought it has gone with the waves, not against them. And I used that as my secret. I just, now I'm poor. All right, what can I do about it? Once you've accepted the inevitable, then you can do something about it. And in his case, he didn't lose all his money. He found that he still had some, and he was able to rebuild his life. He never became wealthy again as he had been, but he didn't need it. He was happy with much less. So it sounds like you're saying a kind of acceptance that isn't passive, because acceptance Absolutely could be passive. Not. No, I don't mean passive acceptance at all. I mean, that kind of acceptance which is willing to be created and think, what can I do about it now? And often during those hard times, opportunities arise that wouldn't ordinarily. There are constantly opportunities. But you know, even if you don't have anything, as a child, uh, as a, young, a teenager, I washed, I washed people's cars. I, uh, in snowstorms, I helped clear their cars from snow. I mowed their lawns. And that may be humiliating for somebody who's been a bank president. But if you are willing to accept that and not feel humiliated, you'll find that your ability will come back and you'll be able to rise in whatever you do. So don't give up. Just understand that the more you try calmly, the more um, success will come to you. Success depends above all on right attitude. A cheerful attitude is one that helps you to look and see solutions. Whereas a depressed attitude, you see nothing but obstacles and, and uh, closed doors. So your attitude is extremely important. Uh, I have read a story just recently about a man who had so many obstacles in his life, but every time he came up smiling, and he became a great success. And that success did not mean money because he didn't want money. Mm -hmm. But people in high positions in life even courted his help mm -hmm. because they respected him for what he could give them. So your attitude of kindness, of cheerfulness, of acceptance in a positive way, of openness to new opportunities, looking to see what can I do now you will see that there's so many things that's available in this world. It keeps going, why can't you? <laughs> Thank you.